so we are doing activity glaze costing sum october november 2020 paper 31 let us look at the question what is the question telling it is telling about a manufacturer bob okay so bob manufactures and sells two products he provides us the information about the products a and b Product A is selling 2,000 units. Product B, 3,000 units. This is the total overheads for the month are as follows. This is my individual cost pool. And this is my total cost pool. Overheads are split between the two products and they are split on the basis of total sales revenue. What do they want from us? They are telling, calculate to two decimal places the profit or loss per unit of each product. Okay, if I have to calculate the profit or loss, how do I proceed with? I will first write sale. I have two product. One is product A, one is product B. I will first write sale, then direct material, direct labor, then we will do overheads, then I will get total cost, then I will find out total profit. Then I will get selling price. Let's see what is the sales. I'm selling 2000 units of product A and I am selling 3000 units of product B. The selling price per unit is 29. So sales of product A will be 2000 into 29. It will be 58,000. For product B, it will be 3,000 into 46, which will give me 138,000. Now let's talk about direct material. Direct material is 8 per unit. So 8 into 2,000, 16,000. And for product B, it would be 12 into 3,000, 36,000. Direct labor. 2,000 into 10, making it 20,000. And over here, 3,000 into 3,000. Overheads are split between the two products on the basis of total sales revenue. Let me see what is the total sales revenue. It is 58,000 and 138,000. That means I have to split the overheads in the ratio of 58 is to 138. The total overheads is 61,160. So 58 plus 138 gives me 196. So 58 over 196 into 61, 160 will be for product A. And into 61, 160 will be for product B. Let's calculate. 61, 160 into 58 divided by 196. So it is coming up to 18,098. For product A, this is my working note 1. And for product B, it is coming up to 43,062. Okay, now let us see what is my total costs. Sale minus cost. Okay, I have the cost. So I will get my total profit. So sales minus the cost will give me my total profit. It's coming up to 3902 for product A.
it is coming up to 3902 for product A and 25938 for product B. Now, what did they want in the question from us? They want the profit or loss per unit. So profit per unit. So this I will divide it by the number of units. So for product A, I have 2000 units. And for product B, I have 3000 units. So when I divide, I will get the profit per unit and they want it up to two decimal places only. So this will become 1.95 and this will become 8.65. We are done with this. Okay, now let's proceed to the next part of the question. The following monthly data is available with us. They have given us some monthly data. Approximately 40% of the floor space is used in the man in manufacture of product A and 60% is used to manufacture product B. That means I have a cost pool of rent, 42,000. This is to be split between product A and product B as per the cost driver. So the cost driver for rent is what? Floor space. So this has to be 40% and 60%. Let's check for um, machinery setup. So machinery used to manufacture product A is set up 300 times a month. So 300 times for product A and 500 times a month for product B. Number of orders. So packaging will be based on the cost driver for packaging will be the number of orders. The cost driver for packaging will be the number of orders. So this is 700 for product A and 420 for product B. And quality inspection checks is 300 for product A and 700 for product B. So this is the cost pool. They have, give, they have given us information about the cost drivers and I have to split the overheads. I have to split the overheads using the additional monthly data. So calculate the amount of overhead that is allocated or apportioned to each product using the above monthly data. So I have product A and product B. I have to split these overheads based on the cost driver. So rent. Okay. I will make two columns for product A. And two columns for product B. So here it will be 40%. Here it will be 60%. And this is my total rent. What is my total rent? 42,000. So calculate 40% is 16,800 and 60% 60 is 25,200. Then my next is machine setup. What is total machine setup cost is 8,000. It has to be split between 3 is to 5, 300, 500. So, 8,000 into 3 by 5 will give me 3,000 and 5,000. Then packaging. The total cost is 6160. The driver is 720 number of orders 720 so split it between them so this will come up to 3850 and this will be 2310 
Now quality inspection. It is five thousand. Cost driver is three hundred and seven hundred. So five thousand divided by one thousand into three hundred. This is going to give me fifteen hundred, and this is going to give me three five zero zero. The column that is of importance to me is this one. So the column that is important to me is this amount one. So my uh, overheads that is allocated or apportioned the total of all this is twenty five thousand one hundred and fifteen, and the total of all this is thirty six thousand zero one zero. Let's proceed. Name and explain why one of Bob's overheads costs cannot be allocated using activity-based costing. There is four overhead costs. Okay, they are telling there is one overhead cost that cannot be allocated using activity-based costing. Which one is it? So we say that rent is one overhead cost that cannot be allocated under ABC because rent is a fixed cost. It is not affected by the level of production. It is not subject to changes in activity level, and that is why we apportion rent only on the basis of floor area. So this is one overhead cost that cannot be allocated using activity based costing is rent so rent cannot be allocated using activity based costing why it cannot be allocated using activity based costing it is because it is a fixed cost why the rent cannot be allocated using activity based costing it is because it is a fixed cost not affected by the level of production rent is not subject to changes in the activity level and that is why we apportion rent on a suitable basis and the suitable basis to apportion rent is always the floor area okay let's go ahead the next question calculate to two decimal places the profit or loss each unit product which would be earned if overheads were calculated using additional monthly data that means if i calculate overheads using additional monthly data what would be my new profit or loss so i have product a and b what is my product a and b the sales direct material and direct labor would remain the same okay so the sales direct material and direct labor would remain the same So product A and B. Now, what is going to change? It's going to change is the overheads. What is the old overheads? What is the old overheads? This is the old overheads as per previous. What is my new overheads that I have calculated? My new overheads for product A and product B is this much. As per the additional data, this is my new overheads, and as per the previous data, this is the old overheads. So what will I do is, I will first take my, I will add back the old overheads. I will add back the old overheads because I don't need it. So eighteen zero ninety eight is my old overheads and forty three zero sixty two is my new overheads. I need the new overheads, so I will subtract the new overheads. So less old overheads, I don't need it, so I will add back. And I want to subtract the new overheads. So what is my new overheads that I want is twenty five one fifteen and thirty six zero one zero. In fact, over here I can. Also start directly with the profit. So what was my old profit? Check behind. 
it was 3902 and 25938 so old profit was how much old profit was 3902 and 25938 in that you add back your old overheads and you subtract the new overheads you don't need the old overheads and what you need is the new overheads then you will get your new profit or loss what will you get you get a new profit or loss 3902 plus this minus this plus this minus this plus this minus this so you are getting new profit or loss over here you are getting a loss of 3150 and for product b you are getting a profit of 32990 so your new profit or loss per unit and you need only up to two decimal places will be for product a you are making a loss of 1.158 and for product b you are making a profit of dollar 11 per unit you need to put these two decimal places advise bob whether or not he should make any changes to the selling price yes he can okay if he is changing the allocation of overhead it is changing his profit his product a is now making a loss per unit however it is still giving a positive contribution isn't it giving a positive contribution most of the increase in the overheads is for product a only the overheads is increasing for product a but for product b it is decreasing so it is changing the allocation of overheads it is not changing the total profit the total profit is still going to remain the same calculate the total profit it is still going to remain the same over here the total profit was how much 3902 plus 25938 so it is making a total profit of 2940 and now the new profit is 32990 minus 3150 the new profit is again 29840 so if he is changing the allocation of overheads if he is changing the allocation of overheads it is not changing the total profit however i can see that the product a is making a loss per unit it still has a positive contribution but because of the overheads there is a loss most of the increase in the overhead is for product a relate to rent the increase in the overhead for product a is mostly increasing because of the rent okay which is apportioned rather than allocated and therefore this is very subjective because rent you cannot use abc costing as it is a fixed cost and for fixed cost which is not mattered because of the activity level abc is not suitable for rent so bob needs to consider what his competitors are charging and what the market can accept for this price if he increase the price for a the sales can fall if sales of a falls then the total contribution might decrease and the fixed cost will still have to be paid so bob has to consider very carefully looking into the market if possible he can charge a lower amount for product b and a higher amount for product a looking at the market conditions so with this i complete this past paper question of october november 20 paper 31